Hey everybody again, welcome back to Spitball and Cards. I'm your host for the day, Jeff. Scotty will be back next time. But with me today, I've got Chris, baseball card addict on Instagram, and Ty, better known as Teapot from the Mark Hoover channel. And the only person on our staff that works at a card store. So he gets a lot of insight. True story. All of ground. our dream jobs, you know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Ty is living the dream. dream. Uh, last time we talked about the NL MVP race, we're about halfway through the season, and we want to touch on the AL MVP race, which is highly contested, yeah. although one guy seems to be pulling away a little bit more than others. But let's get into that. Uh, Ty, American League MVP, who do you got right now, and uh, who do you think is going to take it? <clears throat> well, right now it's Judge. It's Judge's to lose. He's on an incredible pace yet again. Um, you know, we we talked about before the season, a dark horse. I know, I don't remember who all said it. Maybe it was Phil, myself, maybe all of us. We talked about Gunnar Henderson as like a dark horse. You and Phil uh, with, for sure. With yeah. the defense, you know, and if he, if he could pick up his offense a little bit more, even at, over last year, which was good. And he's done that. So he's squarely in the conversation right now, kind of in that two spot with Soto, I'd say. Um, and then you've obviously got to, you know, throw Bobby Witt and uh, into that conversation too. So, um, those are kind of the four top four names I would say right now. And then you got Jose Ramirez having yet another, you know, really, really solid season as he's, uh, done throughout his entire career, pretty much. Yeah. I would say that's definitely the top five and that's different than the national league where it's a two, it's basically a two horse race right now. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty exciting for those, for those five guys, definitely judge judges in the lead, um, you know, for sure right now, but it's interesting. I mean, Bobby Witt has, a far weaker supporting staff. He doesn't have a Soto in that lineup with him. Um, but yeah, that Yankee team is strange. They got two like superstars and then seven other players <laughs> doing the best they can. But yeah. And with, we talked about a little bit with Harper, but judge got off to a slow start too this year. And to just spend the last two months on a tear since, since that start, right. He's been yeah, on since a tear. the calendar flipped over to may. Yeah. He's been out of his mind. Yeah, so we've got the the two Yankees and then uh, a couple of shortstops again. Gunner and Witt, they they're getting the war bump for playing shortstop, right? Uh, but will that matter? I don't. I think if Judge can get over, if Judge if Judge hits sixty home runs again, like he'll he wins the MVP regardless. I think of pretty much what everyone what everyone else does. And I also think it sort of even if he next year were to get hit by a truck, I think it solidifies his place in the hobby almost regardless of how his career, his career pan or his career finishes. So that's three years of hitting 57 or more home runs for the Yankees. But it could be interesting if the Yankees do make it to the world series, we got, we'd have two guys and judge and Harper uh, the theoretically. Sorry. If it's Yankees Phillies, we could have two guys looking to like put the icing on their, on their cake, you know, like the crowning of their career achievement right there. It could be a pretty exciting world series. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if if the Phillies get there, right? Which I right. Know if either team gets there, yeah, that's not the case. Uh, so Ty, uh, you, you you brought up your screen here. You want to tell us what it is? Yeah, I mean, so so Judge is the favorite, uh, the Vegas favorite. I had the odds uh, pulled up a second ago. He's hovering around like minus one thirty five, minus one fifty, and then Gunner's like plus three fifty on most of the sites. So um, it's it's not quite as close as the Otani Harper races right now, but it's somewhat comparable. So Gunner actually has the lead on B war, at least right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't have F four pulled up, but um, 24 home runs versus 28, but Gunner has been on a tear lately, you know, too, he's playing really well, yeah. uh, but judge, you know, at 207 OPS plus uh, he's just mashing and uh this is kind of the the stats for the guys in the race. I had to throw Stephen Kwan up there because I know he's kind of been a fun, buzzy name for us, and he is in six in Vegas odds right now, which is pretty impressive for him. Yeah, especially given the given the time that he missed, the fact that he's still sick. He hasn't even played fifty games to be uh, sixth in the MVP odds. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's batting three ninety, which is <laughs> pretty crazy. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think he'll qualify for the batting title in like two more games or something like that. So by the time yeah. we post this, he might be the uh, the batting leader. I, I would not have guessed that Stephen Kwan was ahead of his teammate, Jose Ramirez, in war. If you just had asked me before coming on and seeing that, that's that's surprising to me. 
Yeah, when 23 fewer games, like you said, that is pretty surprising. And like you had said, Ramirez is having another great season. It's not like he's yeah. he's playing like a slouch. So for him to be behind Quan still is. Yeah, I think it wasn't until like a week ago or so that Judge took the RBI lead away from him. So he delivers. It's an interesting list here because, I mean, I don't want to just ignore Quan, but ignoring Quan, you've got like five, you know, kind of superstars in the league. And those, those are five guys whose cards are already. Four of which, at least, their cards are very expensive. Yeah, if you yes. want to buy in. Um, I don't know exactly what Jose Ramirez's rookie cards are going for, but I would say of those other four, four or five guys, he is probably the cheapest one. Is that accurate? It's got to be. Gotta Jose be Ramirez's cheap. cards. Yeah, I mean, people throw around the term criminally undervalued pretty liberally, but I would say they're they're definitely cheap uh, comparatively. Yeah, yeah for our, what he's our done. Scotty B bought a couple of really of some of his very best cards, didn't he? And yeah. I think he had, well, started. he bought a rookie one of one. I don't know if he still has it or not. I can't remember, but yes. Um, but did. yeah, Ramirez is really interesting because he, he's got several top five MVP finishes and even more top 10. And he has no first Bowman Chrome auto. So like his on-card rookie autos are extra special. And yeah, he just keeps doing this and he's doing it in Cleveland which, you know, outside of an episode of 30 Rock is not a city that I really know much about. <laughs> Gotta be honest. But, I mean, he, he's been really good for a really long time, and I think he is starting to really it, make it his own Hall of Fame claims. For sure, but it begs the question then, will that ever right. translate to hobby interest? That's a good point. Will, will it ever matter? That, that's, a, that's a great point. Just because he mean, seems undervalued doesn't mean he ever won't be. <laughs> Right, he'll ever reach some sort of uh, status of some of these other guys. I mean, Witt is in Kansas City, which isn't a huge, uh, huge market either. But he came in with that big pedigree. Obviously, people from our generation know his dad as a major leaguer, and he's really lived up to his his um, promise. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's that's a, that's a terrible picture of Bobby Witt too. I, I have to say, it's unrelated to his cards. But when I look at that picture, I he should be sitting on a porch strumming a banjo. Like that's not a great that's not a great photo oh but, yeah all right so that. so that that does lead us into the the card conversation with these guys like you said yeah. a lot of them have been expensive one of the guys that chris and i had looked at targeting in the off season was was gunner henderson um uh, and what do we what do we pick up of his chris i it doesn't listen i don't even want to say it it's embarrassing we bought two pitchers yeah, or at least we, you bought. We bought one pitcher. I bought another pitcher, and uh, it, the less said, the better. Oh, no, we got that Strider too. Uh, MC. Yeah. yeah, I think we've got a total of like fourteen innings out of the two pitchers that we bought. Yeah, so we got zero Gunnar Henderson, even uh, though uh, our friends Filmington and Teapot were telling us that he was a dark horse candidate. It it was easy to to get caught up in the narrative that he might be overshadowed on that on that team by some of the higher profile guys, but he just keeps performing and he's hard to ignore and his cards are showing it. Yeah, uh, he was. Uh, he still had some price premium. I think was like you know when the when guys like rookie cards come out and then there's like a cool down period on them. Yeah, like I I was looking at them in the off season and was I just waited too long. I, I was kind of waiting for trying to time it just right, you know, and sometimes it can obviously go either way. I mean, he's coming out, he's having a great season. Uh, it could have gone the opposite too. I mean, you could have just, we look at, look at J rod, like, you know, like any, anybody, you know, that you can just, or Corbin Carroll, like if, look at Corbin Carroll, like that's, yeah. that's what can happen. Be. Right. They're like, Oh, look at, he's going to come out and be a dark horse, you know? Nope. So um, yeah, I can definitely go either direction. So do you think, do you think it's, uh, are there still pockets to get in on him on Gunnar Henderson now, or is he just, uh, too, are you too far priced out to even pay attention? Yeah. What are the, what are his Bowman Chrome autos going for these days, Ty? Um, I was just pulling up some price movement charts on him actually. While you're doing that, I will say that he is a rookie in 2023. Is that right, Jeff? He's in 2023 products. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So much like we did an episode on Michael Harris, Gunner's going to have an, a million rookie cards. He'll have like yeah. 1,500 gold refractors across all these products. I know he's got like almost 10 image variations in various products. So yeah, those are great. Yeah. 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 Just because it's low number doesn't mean it's 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 rare or it's unusual. Yeah. Well, I mean, we don't even track 
we don't track every Gunnar Henderson card in Market Movers. We have a lot of his rookie cards in here. And this is just graded versions. And you've got like 552 different cards with sales in the last 60 days. That's Jeez. that's a lot. I mean, yeah, for a guy, that's the, that's between his Bowman, you know, prospect stuff and his rookie cards. It's every card that he's had. But oh, um, wow. yeah, like this, this card saw a nice spike in the last a lot of green on that chart a lot of green yeah yeah so um this card saw a big bump from what is that wow 360 dollars which card is that this is his orange mojo refractor it's pop this is pop five i mean this is like sometimes you see that stuff it gets kind of wonky too when you have different um you know these different refractors that people aren't always like looking at comps this is Top ten between those two grades. Obviously, it's a number to twenty-five. But um, his real one auto PSA nine up ninety percent in the last sixty days. A lot, definitely a lot of cards moving in the general direction. I think over the last sixty days total seventeen percent on average. So um, you know, there's a lot of different factors that can come into a different uh, an individual card, especially a whoops, especially a low pop card um, having some some price variation like that. Very true. I do like his his tops golden mirror rookie. Uh, I think it's horizontal. He's got the chain, the dugout, and he's like high fiving after a home run. That's oh, yeah. just a really that's a really great looking card. Yeah, I guess I, this one. Yes, that one. Eleven hundred. Yeah, the, the P. Yeah, yeah, those PSA, the PSA ten of that have been climbing up. But yeah, that's just a, that's a good looking card. Yep. Yeah. So you got to try to pick and choose. Like Chris said, there's going to be hundreds and into the thousands of even gold refractors of, of a guy like Gunner. So it's going to be hard to find which ones are going to sustain value. Yeah, absolutely. Um, T uh, Ty, while we're looking in, um, are we seeing the judge market uh, move up? That's what I, uh, or, or so much baked in with him already? Yeah. So I was just going to pull up his Bowman Chrome auto too. I was okay. like, I, looking at it. oh why did i why is it not pulling up yeah so i mean that's definitely moving up nicely in the last 90 days uh that's pretty wow, good yeah price appreciation 77 percent um i like to look at this side by side with just his regular bowman chrome like even just like their base uh base psa 10s okay it's just this because sometimes just in terms of like the short game, we've talked about this before. Mm -hmm. You can see the liquidity of this, like the, the liquidity. Amazing. I mean, it's easier, you know, if you look at, um, well, those are on a pretty similar trajectory actually, which is kind of, which is kind of surprising to be honest overall, but, but look at those swings on there. Yeah. If you time yeah. those swings. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what is that? What is that bottom card? This is just, this is, uh, oh, this is his rookie. Sorry. I pulled up the yeah. wrong card. Yeah. Sorry. I was like, that should be more expensive. Um, I do, I do like the Bowman Chrome rookie image better, but that's yeah. neither here nor there. Yeah. Well, anyway, you wanted me to pull up judge. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I just, I feel like judges, judges just always been expensive. Like he was right. crazy expensive in 2017 when tops built yeah. like their entire releases around him. And even when he got hurt in a lot of those subsequent years, I feel like his stuff really didn't dip. Even when his yeah. production dipped, his stuff kind of stayed like being with the Yankees and rookie of the year and 50 plus home runs. Yeah, he does have a really strong floor compared to most players that we see. Absolutely. Yeah, I think I, I, I sort of made a joke about it when we were on that uh, Hobby Palooza yesterday. That if his if his first Bowman Chrome said first, I do think it'd be about five percent, maybe five percent higher. I agree. Yeah, yeah. I'd say yeah, five to ten percent bump for that yeah. first. So this one's had two sales in the last ninety days, and uh, that's I mean this was right when he like. Started to, I guess he turned it on a little bit before this, didn't he? Is it, I can't was it really in the last month? So this was uh, May 17. Okay. Yeah, it was, was like May 1st. So basically, yeah. like first or second of May, he uh, uh, he flipped the switch. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that's kind of interesting. Yeah. Here's the last 180 days of a couple, you know, very different cards in terms of uh, pop count and notoriety, but, um, you know, some similar, similar trajectories. Uh, 3,300. Uh, on the most recent sale for his PSA 10 Bowman draft Chrome draft pick auto. That's a mouthful. Mm -hmm. uh, That's 3,300 bucks for his base first Bowman Chrome auto in a PSA yeah. 10. Pop 64. Man. Yep. It's only a yeah. pop I'd like to see. Wow. 
I, I would like to see if we could do this real quick. Or um, can we compare that to Bryce Harper's base Bowman Chrome Auto in a PSA 10? And yeah. maybe compare that also to like, give me another name, Jeff. What do you think? Betts? Betts base Bowman Chrome Auto in a sure. PSA 10? I would love to see what those three guys like. Otani is going to be different because he doesn't really yes. have one. Otani doesn't have one. He doesn't really fall in there. No. Can't really compare it to Trout. I'm getting too. I'm getting too fired up here, Jeff. My my, <laughs> my legs are cramping talking about baseball cards. It's not a high point of my personal fitness. This is interesting. Eighteen hundred Mookie and, and Harper are ba basically the same right now. Judges is about a third of the population of Mookies. Okay. Uh, but yeah, thirty three hundred dollars. I mean, when you compare those three players, that's that's pretty crazy. That's, that's well, interesting. It just goes to show that not all card prices are based on career. Yeah, career yeah. We can't just look at career war and assume yeah. card values. You know. Yeah. Absolutely. But yeah, that's the fun. pop. I think the pop definitely has something to do with that. I would actually. Well. <laughs> I don't know how long we want to do this, but if you want to look at those same three cards in a BGS 9.5, you might see a different uh, pop result. Yeah, you wonder how many more judges there are yeah. in the in the BGS labs. All right, so we're seeing a similar... Wow. Huh? Oh. oh, okay. Wow. This is... I mean, we talked about this last episode too, that I, and this episode, but the 9.5s versus the 10, that's crazy. That's a yeah, crazy but, difference. Yeah. But still, so judge judge still outsells those the other two. Yeah, 1300 But not, I mean, that's not 3K. Not by as much, right? Yeah, not yeah. by as much, yeah. Yeah. Wow. I would, yeah, I, 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 you got to think that Harper number is going to get get close. Harper and Betts may, Harper may pass Betts in the next couple of months, assuming full health. He may if he, if he yeah. yeah, gets on that MV3 trajectory. Yeah. All right. But to, to back to the AL MVP race. Sorry. <laughs> how much is narrative going to help that uh, choose the winner? Like are, the Orioles are a young team. They're making a push. The Yankees are overachieving. How much will that play a role, Chris? I think we'll just, I think it's really interesting because the Orioles and Yankees are in the same division and they're like a half game, maybe a game or a half game apart based, uh, you know, by the time we're recording this. So, you know, whichever team finishes out in front, that could be a little bump uh, for whichever guy, especially if their numbers you know, are, are similar. And they, I would say they're similar right now. Judge certainly better, but Gunner playing shortstop is a big deal. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, getting that by in the first round on paper sounds great. Obviously, Ty and I know it's it's not that great. <laughs> it doesn't quite yeah, matter. What, what do you think, Ty, about that? Will is, is it gonna? Do you think it'll end up going to the? the guy whose team finishes higher in that race? Um, I mean, th that can definitely, I think that can be a factor. We talked about that, you know, this similarly, it's probably the same dynamic as, um, you know, what we talked about with Otani and, and, um, you know, in the, in the last conversation, it's like, who's going to close the season stronger? Yeah. Whose team finishes higher in the rankings? I think those two, if it's close, those two things definitely come into the conversation into the, into the minds of the voters and who finishes, you know, who finishes stronger. Um, it's, I mean, it's kind of anyone's race at this point though, in the AI, yeah, it's I definitely not a two man, you know, a two man race. Like any, like I hope I just, I don't know. I, I always hope like these guys just stay healthy. Like that's the biggest thing. Like just for sure. Stay yeah, healthy. Yeah, don't get it. Don't have any injuries. Like screw up an MVP caliber season. And, yeah. um, very different players, you know, in a, in a way, um, at least in terms of their position. So um, I was watching the Orioles the other night and Gunner is very fun to watch. Like he's, he's really fun to watch. So um, I don't know. Yeah, Maybe I, yeah. I'm, I'm personally pulling for, for Gunner. Sorry, Yankees fans, but um, just because of that, uh, he's young, he's exciting. He's kind of one of the faces he and wit. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. They're I would love the yeah. next generation. I'd love to see Jose Ramirez be able to put like a, a little crowning achievement on his like just run of regular season excellence that we were talking about, like so many top 10 MVP finishes, but it's going to yeah. take, he's going to have to get crazy hot in the second half to keep up. Cause if judge stays on the field, he's, he's going to clear 50 home runs and that's going to be real tough for these other guys to compete with. Yeah. 
yeah, my my preseason prediction of Soto, I'm still sticking with, but man, it's going to be hard to pry those votes away from from Judge if he keeps anything remotely close to this pace up. But I think Soto, I'm I'm really impressed with his early season performance because that hasn't been a strong suit for him. So if he continues his usual trajectory of getting hotter during the second half, he could turn into a monster monster season as well. I mean, some of these. One of these guys could put uh, put a double digit war together, or maybe even more than one. So, oh yeah, I I wouldn't be surprised if three of those guys, all those infielders, get uh, get to ten. Yeah, I I would be more surprised if Guerrero hits twenty home runs. I'll put it that way. Well, as of recording, he did finally get into double digits. So he get to ten. I think he's going to get twenty. All right, let's hope so. A side bet, Jeff. Uh, you put yeah, the over under on the season home runs are like twenty one and a half. What do you think? I'm going the over. Okay. All right. I got five bucks says under. All right. Just because it'll hurt me so much. So, all right, right, play back. Go. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Remember this? We got our first yeah. good ball and bet. First wager. Um, all right. So you're uh, you're pulling for Gunner. Is that who you think is going to win? If you had to guess right now, halfway through the season, Ty, is that 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 where you're putting your money? Or are you? No. no. I feel like it's going to be one of Soto or Judge. Okay. I think it's going to be one of those two guys. Personally, I mean, I'd have to, I'd vote, I would vote judge right now, but there is still a lot of season left. So we'll see. Of Chris. those five guys that we talked about, who who do you think would get the biggest bump in their card prices with an MVP win? Probably Jose Ramirez. His, he's already so low. If he actually gets an MVP, I feel like he could get a, a higher percentage bump than the other guys. I can yeah, maybe. Maybe I don't. I don't know. I never know what to make of Jose Ramirez if he's ever gonna like see people really pay attention. I would say, um, I always think when guys are inflated, like Judge. Which, by the way, I, I looked at that sale a little more closely. It was an auction on PC Sports Cards, and I mean, it looks legit. There was a seller with four buyer or a buyer with four buyer feedback that was like the second highest bid. So, but there were a lot. There was a lot of bid activity on it with different sellers. So. I don't know. It was like double the last sale. So maybe he's closer to 1500. That was a weird fluke, but um, I think Gunner, I think Gunner is, is still kind of flying under the radar a little bit. I know his cards are going up, but like I could see people getting really excited if the, if the Orioles, you know, make a big run and, and actually do something in the playoffs this year with more pitching, you know, this year that he could see a big bump. Um, any of those, any of those top three guys to me could see even more of a bump. Even Judge, like even though he's high, I think he could go higher. He, he has in the past; he's gone higher. Yeah, so. I, I, yeah, I think so, uh, for Judge, I think an ALCS, a huge playoff performance, you know, just like with Otani, could push his stuff into, at, uh, into the next level. Yeah, yeah. Well, halfway through, we'll revisit this towards the end of the year, but. Um... Thanks, everybody who stuck with us during this conversation. Please let us know in the comments who you think is going to win the MVP uh, and maybe throw a dark horse in there. Who you think uh, who you think might show up that we haven't talked about? Maybe a Kyle Tucker, maybe Jordan gets hot and the Astros turn their season around. So uh, put in the comments what you think and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Thanks.